the most common question I get asked is, Dear Mr. Ben, which 360 camera should I buy? There are so many and I don't know which one to get. Okay, thanks, bye. Something that's really exciting about the 360 field is that there's so many new cameras coming out. It feels like there's almost a new camera every single week. So the whole landscape changes significantly every few months. So I know I have done this video before, but this is going to be something I will now do every three months to keep you guys super informed about the whole landscape of 360 cameras, which ones are the best, who is at the top of the hierarchy, who's in the middle and who's at the bottom. So let's do it. I started my 360 career about three years ago, shooting with the Theta M15 and a lot has changed since then. And one camera I'm super excited about is Ricoh's brand new camera, and that's the Theta V. Finally, Ricoh have entered the 4K game. In my experience, Ricoh have consistently delivered the best look whenever I've compared it to other cameras. The dynamic range and everything about the look has been superior to the other brands. And they've been getting better and better with each new camera. And I know the look is going to be excellent when I finally do get my hands on the Theta V and test it out. It seems like Ricoh are putting their names forward as a serious contender in the 4K 360 video space, which they weren't currently in. They were one of the later adopters. Most other camera companies do have a 4K camera by now and Ricoh don't but they will very soon in just a few weeks. So stay tuned for the Theta V. It's not going to be a perfect camera like I outlined before. I think the storage might be a big factor in the usability of it, but I know the results you'll be able to get are amazing. So if there's a workaround with the storage issue, I'm confident this is going to be one of the best 360 cameras of 2017. With that camera coming really soon, I'd strongly advise not to buy the previous Theta models, which include the Theta M15, the Theta S and the Theta SC. They were great cameras a year or two ago, but now they are yesterday's news and the future is basically here. So go for the Theta V if you are a diehard Ricoh user. The closest competitor of the Theta V, we all know it, it's going to be the Insta360 One. And the camera looks amazing from all the previews I've seen so far. And if you saw my previous video where I give my initial impressions on both cameras, you'll see that the Insta360 One did come out on top, just based on specs and some of the footage that has been released in the photos. However, I have been talking to a few people who actually have gotten their hands on both cameras and they're telling me that it's going to be a lot more even between the two, that the Insta360 One isn't going to be massively better than the Theta V and the Theta V could potentially beat it in many areas. So let's definitely stay tuned about that. Yes, it's super exciting that the Insta360 One is now available for purchase, but we still should wait to see some sample photos, sample videos, and just really test it in all situations before we start fanboying over it too much. I know it's going to be good, but I know it is going to have flaws. All cameras have flaws. There is no such thing as a perfect 360 camera. Insta 361 versus Theta V is going to be the biggest showdown since McGregor versus Mayweather. And yes, I'm predicting it's gonna go for several rounds. It's gonna go for a long time. They'll go right to the end. And then it's probably gonna be a TKO. Who Floyd Mayweather's gonna be? Don't know yet, but I think there will be a Floyd Mayweather. With the Insta360 One coming out, I can say with confidence that you should no longer buy the Insta360 Nano. It was a really cool camera a year, year and a bit ago, but now it's just not. Personally, I find it a massive inconvenience not being able to separate my camera and my phone. So because of this, I would say don't buy the Nano and also don't buy the Insta360 Air because that's the same thing, but for Android, Insta360 are going to be working on an Insta360 One for Android. The other camera that Insta360 have is the Pro, which I have yet to get my hands on. I've seen some amazing 8K video samples from it and it looks absolutely stunning. However, due to the price being three and a half grand, this has scared off a lot of consumers. Yes, I have seen a lot of my professional friends buy the camera and from what I've seen, they're doing some pretty impressive work with it and they're shooting high-end content for clients with it. But now that they've produced an affordable professional 360 camera, I'm already seeing other companies come out with similar cameras to that, like the, the Kandao Obsidian Go is coming out soon and the Zcam S1. They're in a similar price range, delivering similar quality video and photo and everything. So the Insta360 Pro currently dominates this price bracket in the few thousand dollar range, but there are going to be competitors soon. So if you want something professional, this is going to be an awesome camera for you. However, if you're willing to wait a few months, there's going to be at least two more competitors. One of the first brands to enter the 360 camera market was Samsung with the Gear 360 2016, and it's still one of the most popular 360 cameras out there. And it still does quite a good job 
compared to cameras of a year ago and, and longer than that. At the moment, it's $99 on Amazon and that is really, really hard to say no to. However, there are just, there's just so much innovation happening right now that it is a camera of the past. Yes, it will still give you an excellent 4K result. However, there have been so many new innovations and features added to 360 cameras, stuff like six axis stabilization, increased resolution, better dynamic range. And personally, if I was buying my very first 360 camera, I wouldn't buy this one only because its technology is now old. I'd go for something much newer at a slightly increased price point, but you're going to get way more value than those extra 50 or $100 you might spend. And you'll be using today's innovations instead instead of almost two years ago's innovations. I do have reviews of the Gear 360 2016 and the 2017 camera on my YouTube channel, so definitely check them out. However, I would put these on the maybe list because this space is evolving so quickly, they're both still using outdated technology. Like so many cool things have come out in the last 12 months and already the 2016 and the 2017 are falling behind. They were awesome cameras when they came out. But like I said, this space is just evolving so quickly. Cameras are getting twice as good every single year. So a camera from a year ago becomes redundant. This is both extremely depressing and extremely exciting at the same time because you're getting way better cameras all the time. My approach to this is selling old cameras and using the money you get to put towards a new camera. This means you can stay up to date with all the latest 360 technology and not burn a hole in your wallet. Even though my wallet has been singed and abused and is never gonna talk to me again, but hey, that's my job. I gotta get all the cameras so you guys can stay informed. This brings me to my new favorite 360 video camera, and that's the Garmin, you know it, Verb. The Verb, V-I-R-B, not V-E-R-B, V-I-R-B. How on earth did they come up with that name? What were they thinking? Why didn't they call it the adjective? Would it sound so much slicker and sexier? If you saw my review of it from two weeks ago, you'll see that it delivers 5.7K video resolution, amazing dynamic range, amazing latitude in post to really get full control of your colors, and it's waterproof without even needing waterproof housing. So if you do prefer shooting 360 video over 360 photo, then the Garmin Verb is gonna be one of your top contenders. Definitely consider it and definitely watch my review because it's an amazing 360 video camera. One of the upcoming competitors to the Verb Verb is the Yi VR 360 and this was announced a few months ago. It's supposed to already be out by now, but there's been delays. It's supposed to be $399 and deliver 5.7K video. I have seen a few samples of it online and to be honest, I've been really underwhelmed. It looked okay, the stitching was okay, even the resolution didn't look that good. So I'm not super excited about this camera. The only exciting thing is the price point. This could potentially be the cheapest 5.7K 360 video camera. So let's stay tuned for that but I'm not gonna hold my hopes too high. Next, we have the Nikon Key Mission 360. And to be honest, this is a camera I never bought because I always saw such atrocious reviews on Amazon and elsewhere that I just couldn't justify buying it. Some of the footage I've seen looks decent, but unfortunately there were massive problems with the app. It was just hard to stitch the footage, the stitching was bad, and this has already become a camera of the past, even though it came out maybe six to 12 months ago. Don't consider the Nikon Key Mission because it is overpriced and now you can get amazing 4K video. For much cheaper than that, you might wanna consider some of the other cameras. The Garmin Verb is going to blow the Nikon Key Mission out of the water, both with the design, the app, and just everything else. I've noticed a few people are still showing interest in the LG 360 cam, which is one of the very first 360 cameras to come out. I think they've actually discontinued this camera. So while there are a few on Amazon and it is under $100 right now, there were massive stitching issues with it. You could see the seam lines really clearly and it just wasn't that good of a camera. LG are probably working on their next generation 360 camera. That's my prediction. And that prediction is 100% unverified and made up. Another camera, unfortunately, I didn't get my hands on was the Gyroptic IO, which was Gyroptic's answer to the Insta360 Nano. Surprisingly, it did sell a lot of cameras, but it wasn't actually that good. The resolution wasn't good. I didn't like the look of it at all. It just wasn't a good camera. They had a really good marketing campaign where they had a viral video get like 7 million views and heaps of people bought it. But it's an inferior camera to basically everything. So I guess that shows you the power of marketing. However, you definitely should not buy this camera because again, it's a clip-on camera to 
a smartphone and those aren't good and the quality, the resolution and also the price are just not very appealing compared to all of the other choices we've got on this list. This brings me to the Kodak Orbit 360 and finally they've released it about a year after they first announced it and it looks okay. It would have been one of the top cameras out there if it was released one year ago but now that a year has passed it doesn't actually offer anything new that another camera doesn't offer. I used to own the Kodak SP360 4K and that was an awesome dual camera rig and the look of it was amazing. I was really impressed by it. However, the workflow was way too long so I can see why they've now combined two cameras into one. That's an awesome step. However, they're all doing it now. There's so many consumer cameras where there's two lenses on the same camera. So Kodak have done that. However, they're not offering anything that new. I've seen some footage and it looks okay at best. I probably will try and get my hands on this camera. However, it's not a priority. This brings me to a camera that I would kill to get my hands on and that is the GoPro Fusion. Everyone's talking about it and we are seeing samples come out all the time. They look really, really impressive. GoPro are going to offer 5.7K, awesome looking slow motion, just an amazing look that you would normally see with a GoPro. They've now turned that into a 360 camera and yeah, it looks like an awesome camera. The price point from what I've heard from Michael from 360 Rumors is going to be about $1,000. That is not cheap at all. And for 5.7K, when we do have competitors now like the Garmin Verb, which is an amazing video camera and also the Yi, I don't know what the GoPro's point of difference is. I know they're going to have amazing stitching from what I've seen. The samples look stunning and you can see dogs running by the seam line of the camera and there's no stitching errors at all, as well as the slow motion. It looked absolutely incredible. However, is this a $1,000 camera? I can't tell just yet. I'll have to get one in my hands and I'll get a review out to you guys as soon as humanly possible. But for now, Let's just wait and see. We might be waiting for a while actually because they announced it to come out around, I think it was April of 2018. So this isn't going to be a camera that you get this year. So I would strongly suggest considering the other cameras so you have something to shoot with while we wait for the GoPro. There's one camera I haven't mentioned yet. Can you guess what it is? It's my favorite camera at the moment and it's the camera I recommend to the most people. And that is the Xiaomi. Mijia MeSphere. Yes, the camera whose name I still can't pronounce is looking like the best option right at this very second. Yes, I do have an Insta360 One in the mail and I do have a Theta V in the mail. So those very well could give this a run for its money, but I think this is going to be a strong competitor still to both of those cameras and is going to hold its own for a while to come yet. I would say at least six months more, this is gonna be one of the top cameras available. And I'm sure Xiaomi are probably working on the next generation camera as well. At the moment, this is cheap on Gearbest. It's two to $300. And I've been so happy to see the rise of this camera. It started as a camera nobody had heard of. And then Michael from 360 Rumors discovered it. He told me about it. We both made a lot of videos about it. And now I can see hundreds and hundreds of you guys have bought one of these cameras and you're so happy with it. That was, that's been so awesome because I love it when the little guy wins. There are companies with millions and millions of dollars budget and then there's, there's this company Zhao, Zhao Jing, oh, sorry, Zhao, Xiaomi, Xiaomi, comes out with a camera and it's better than those companies that have millions of dollars. So go the little guy. The Xiaomi is an awesome option. This camera is on sale all the time on gearbest.com. Check the link in the description because you're going to find it from anywhere from $200 to $300, just depending on the time that you click the link. It changes all the time. They're always having sales. So I would strongly suggest checking it out because this is an awesome camera. Check out my review of it on my YouTube channel because you'll see all the awesome reasons why this is one of the top cameras available for consumers right now. By the way, I just want to quickly add there is a whole new market of 360 cameras that have one single lens and they capture most of a 360 but not a full 360. Cameras like the 360 Fly and many more. I don't really work with these cameras because I don't consider them to be 360 cameras so I'm going to leave them off this list. So I hope this video was helpful and helping you understand the whole landscape of 360 cameras as it stands. Like I said, it's changing so quickly, which is why I've decided I'm going to remake this exact video every three months. So you guys can be really in the loop about all the latest cameras that have come out and how they compare to the others. It's hard for me now to compare every camera to every camera because there are now over 30 cameras and it's hard for me to do one-on-ones. I'll try to do as many side-by-side -side comparisons as I can, but I'm also going to do group comparisons where I don't necessarily 
necessarily go into every detail, but I just give you a general gist of each camera. And then you'll also see on my YouTube channel and Facebook as well, I've got lots of in-depth reviews of all of these cameras, as well as side-by-side -side comparisons. So check those out if you like the sound of any of these cameras you've just heard. Until next time, this has been Ben and the Zhao Jing camera telling you to keep capturing your world in 360. And remember, any 360 camera is better than no 360 camera. So even the cameras that are on my do not buy list, even any single one of them is better than no 360 camera. So whatever your budget is, go for a camera that fits that. But I would strongly suggest the ones in the do buy list because those cameras are incredible and you're going to be really, really happy with all of them. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome 360 shit coming really soon. We've got heaps and heaps of really exciting videos and announcements coming, so you won't want to miss those. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Ben Claremont. Also on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash life and 360 photo. I've got some awesome competitions coming up there and just lots of awesome, exciting 360 content that you guys won't want to miss. Oh, and by the way, I'm coming to America really soon through throughout the month of October, coming to LA, San Francisco, New York, and then Vancouver at the very end. So stay tuned for that. Can't wait to meet up with you guys and, and just shoot awesome 360 content. I might hold some workshops and just really make the most of all the awesome stuff the US has to offer. Can't wait to come and I'll see you guys soon.